uh, start the meeting. First, we'll start with the roll call by the town clerk. Chairman McKinney. Present. Councillor Becker. Present. Councillor Dill. Present. Councillor Lennon. Present. Councillor Lynch. Present. Councillor Rowe. Present. Councillor Swift Kayada. Here. Manager McGovern. Here. Okay. Uh, would everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, minutes of meeting number one, 2007, held December 11th, 2006. Any comments on the meeting? Um, I thought on item 19, which um, the minutes aren't paged, so if you just Go to one, two, three, four, the fifth page, item 19, where we referred the zoning amendment um, that had been um, requested for Canyon Creek development to the planning board. I think we referred it to the planning board for further review, not for approval. Yes, that's my recollection. So I would suggest that we amend the minutes to strike the word approval and in two places and then um, add the word review. All right, do we have a motion to accept the minutes with the amendment? So moved. Second. Any, any other comments? All right, all in favor? Okay. Seven. Okay, reports and correspondence. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, uh, on December 13th, uh, I attended a meeting of the Cumberland County uh, Municipal Oversight Committee. Uh, the purpose of the meeting was to establish a framework and uh, procedure by which HUD monies would be distributed through the Cumberland County uh, Community Development Block Program, Block Grant Program. Uh, I found the meeting very interesting, and I particularly enjoyed meeting uh, county officials uh, and uh, dignitaries from surrounding communities. I would encourage any citizen who has any questions about this meeting uh, to just get contact me uh, through the email or phone number listed on the town website. Thank you. Thanks, Jim. Any other reports or correspondence? Cynthia? Uh, yes, I would just briefly report that as a member of the 123rd Legislature, I was appointed to the Judiciary Committee. And if there's any issues or concerns that people have with respect to that committee work, I'm certainly available as well as, and maybe even more important, um, as some of you may know, the, um, the budget proposal is starting, um, and there's some bold initiatives regarding school reform, and I look forward to Cape Elizabeth being um, involved and a player. So please keep in touch. Thank you. Anything, anybody else? Yeah, thanks. A town manager's report. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. My report actually, as indicated on the agenda, consists of an update from the Conservation Commission and the town planner on all the excellent uh, work that's being done on trails. So I will turn it over to the group. Just to let you know, um, there's a memo in your package, and what I'm going to do is just a brief PowerPoint presentation that gives you a little bit more visuals. Uh, the Conservation Commission has, I think, accomplished more in the last year than they've done for quite some time in terms of um, improvement to the physical condition of the trails, and I just thought I'd uh, show you some of that work for this year. Um, but this not very well seen in this slide is a 
copy of the trail staff for the Tennessee Commission, and the work that was done by the Commission was in this area of Gulf West. Um, so up here at Stonegate, down in here, um, two points, this point, and then down here at Great Pond. Um, we have a new bridge over here at the Big Woods, and this work here in uh, Cross Hill. So you can see that the work of the Commission was um, spread throughout the town based on the most critical needs. Goldcrest, and this is a map of Goldcrest right here. Um, a lot of the work was done on this section right here, what we call the follow road connector. We also uh, did some work up in this wet area up in here uh, where we lay down some telephone poles. I can't, you have that picture here, Pat, I can't get to you tonight in the presentation because it's just too large. This is the work that was done in the Father Road Connector. Uh, as you can see, this, this is critical because this connects, this connects uh, the almost 150 acres of Gulf Crest to Great Pond. Uh, going on to Great Pond, which is across Father Road. We had uh, an Eagle Scout do a bridge, there's a small pond here which doesn't have a name, and he built a bridge in this one little section here, which is a critical point for the access for the people who live in Murray Road and people from north of there. Uh, the second place was right down here, right here. Um, you know what, you're, you'll probably hear more about this. That's a pretty problematic section for the Conservation Commission. It's uh, very wet there, it's a very important connection, and uh, quite frankly, the, the Commission's down there every two three years trying to make improvements to broadening materials. So, but this is that upper pond that I pointed out, and if you just descend from kind of Burning Road down the hill, um, this is the new bridge that was constructed by Eagle Scouts. Uh, and Eagle Scout, uh, we funded the maintenance costs uh, excuse me, the materials cost and the labor was all donated. This is the Alewife Bridge that I mentioned and what you see there is one of our trail stays with uh, some of our Conservation Commission members and volunteers in the neighborhood and again uh, this particular trail stay we had some of the Conservation Commission members show up on a Saturday and all they did was haul all of the material down the hill which is a huge effort to with, it's one of the challenges of Great Pond. And then the next day, this crew showed up extremely happy that they weren't going to have to haul the materials down and were able to complete the bridge. And that's what it looks like now. Unfortunately, one of the problems with maintaining the trails is we seem to be always dealing with vandalism issues. Inexplicably, someone tried to set a fire on the Alewife Brook Bridge. And I, I just don't know how to explain that, but these are the things that the commission is dealing with in addition to the typical wear and tear and wearing out of materials. At Stonegate, Stonegate's one of our older trail systems, um, a very uh, uh, committed group of neighbors up there. Uh, what happened up here is a lot of bridge replacement work, uh, particularly this is Dyer Pond Road right here. If you come in the Dyer, Pro and Dyer Pond entrance, there's a section right here which has been very problematic. There were actually two bridges there that wash out regularly. And then there's another very important bridge that connects right through here and it had finally worn out. There's another bridge in this area where wood was hauled from this point in to repair that bridge. This was a really interesting project for the commission because it's the first time they used steel tubing and uh, they discovered it's really heavy. and um, they got a, a town resident to volunteer the use of his ATV to haul the steel tubing in from the road. Um, the, cons the, the public works department cut the steel tubing and delivered it to the site. So this particular bridge used to be two bridges. And um, they're very proud of the fact that it's now one bridge. They built crib work in the middle so that we now have just the one bridge. Um, and as you can see, it's, it's a pretty interesting, I was impressed, feat of engineering so that this bridge that annually runs 
downstream and has to be put back in place probably won't be going anywhere. I'm told that as they were completing the decking, a runner ran by, said thanks, and kept going. So it, it got use almost immediately. Around the corner from that bridge is the second bridge. This is the one that also has steel tubing underneath it. You can see the old bridge still in place underneath it that was supported by a log, a couple of trees. And the commission's plan is to take that out because they're aesthetically offended by the way it looks right now. But uh, they were able to haul in the steel tubing and then put the decking on top. Again, the decking was cut by Public Works and, and delivered to the road and then volunteers hauled it in. Um, you can see some of the attention to detail. Uh, one of the issues we have is not just building boardwalks and bridges, but the ramping up and down in this particular part of Stonegate. There was a lot of attention to detail in terms of putting in stones. And this is just one of the volunteers who, who walks around and uh, finds muddy places on town trails and builds uh, stone walkways from the nearby materials. So. Winnick Woods. Winnick Woods is one of our newest endeavors. Uh, the town council adopted a master plan for Winnick Woods. I think it was just a year ago. It's a 57 to 71 acre parcel. We're not quite sure how big it is. But it was donated to the town for passive use. Uh, the master plan shows, as you can see here, a series of trails that from this end of Sawyer connect you all the way down to this point and to this point right here, which is Cross Hill. So this is really significant because from this point, you can get all the way down to the Spurwink Marsh on town public access trails. But these trails need to be constructed. And this particular bridge was crucial because there's a wet area right in here. And it is a goal of the master plan to start mowing this meadow area. Because if we don't mow it, it's going to grow into forest land. And the master plan for Winnick Woods is unique in that one of the goals was to try to maintain a variety of landscapes. Uh, right now, it's the only place we're really making an effort to, to try to not have things all turn into woodlands. So except for the field next to the Public Works building, this would be another field where we would try to mow it annually and maintain it as a meadow. And to do that, we needed to have access for equipment. And this bridge right here was built by another Eagle Scout. Uh, again, he provided the design and the labor and the Conservation Commission paid for the materials. Finally, Cross Hill. Um, Cross Hill, as many of you are aware, is a neighborhood located on uh, off of Wells Road. Cross Hill is the first neighborhood where the Conservation Commission is attempting a pilot project where we, cre we create a neighborhood liaison group that sort of adopts the trails. And uh, we had some uh, residents of the neighborhood. They contacted us with some concerns. And before you know it, we had them recruited as volunteers. Um, in this neighborhood, we have, we're dropping wood off at people's houses. And they're cutting it up. And they're delivering it to the site. Uh, we had a problem, in particular, with the end of Hawthorne Road with a very muddy section that it was all right for light foot traffic, but once it started getting really heavy use, turned into a very muddy section. And it was a key access point for the Greenbelt and Cross Hill. So what happened was uh, we ended up building several pieces of boardwalk in that section. Uh, this was all done with volunteer labor. Uh, almost all of them were residents of the Cross Hill neighborhood, although there were, some, there were some other volunteers from other parts of town who were just really committed to trails. And again, in this case, um, the wood in most of these places was delivered to um, one of the residents who cut it up and then left it there for another group to actually put it in place and construct it. So just to summarize uh, what's going on, where we're spending um, probably a little bit more on an annual basis for materials than we're currently being funded. But that's because we're basically under spending in one year to compensate for the next year. Um, in Gullcrest, we got a $15,000 grant to build some of those trails. And so we're matching that with, with our own money. In all these other cases, um, the bills would be significantly higher without all the volunteer labor. Um, and then the conclusions, we just wanted to take the opportunity, since we're talking to the council, to recognize the things that wouldn't hap this wouldn't happen without. And the number one thing is the volunteers. We've had tremendous amount of, of volunteer effort from individual Conservation Commission members and from members of the public who routinely will show up 
Um, I've been able to develop an email list, and when we have an event now, I email it out. I actually have people who email me back if they can't make it and apologize. So um, there's a lot of volunteer effort. Uh, leverage funding, we, we take the money that we have, and we almost never spend it on actual labor. It's all being used on materials, and then we're able to do a lot more with it. Uh, we've gotten tremendous support from Public Works. Uh, they've done a lot of uh, purchasing of materials, delivering them to sites, cutting up materials whenever they've had the chance. Uh, just, just this last week they called me and said, since there's no snow, do you have something we can do for you? And of course we had a huge list. Uh, but they are very, very supportive. We were very lucky this year that we had two really good Eagle Scouts who uh, completed both of their projects right on time. And the last trend is that uh, the Commission spent a lot of time swinging hammers, hauling materials, and they've come to the conclusion that we probably need to start buying better quality rot resistant materials so that we don't have to rely so heavily on labor. That we probably need to start building things that will last a little longer. And that does have an implication for how much we're going to be able to do because the better quality materials cost more money. So with that, I'll answer any questions. There are also several members of the commission here if you have any questions. Does anybody on the council have any uh, questions for the commission? No. Mary Ann? I, I just want to thank them. I've been on almost all of the bridges as I do my daily five-mile walk through town and it's just really really wonderful and I, I know there are I speak for hundreds of people who use those trails every day and saying thank you to all of you and all the other people who volunteered and yeah. um, I know Maureen already I thank the volunteers as I'm sure the whole council does too but I wanted to particularly mention the Eagle Scouts Nicholas Quatrano and Randy Hobbs because they did great work on this. I don't know either one of them personally, but oftentimes we read or, or hear about young folks not being volunteers in their community, and I think they deserve special recognition because they, uh, they set an example for, for all of us, as do the rest of the Conservation Commission volunteers. And I'd also um, like to uh, thank the town planner for her efforts on this and for all the folks at Public Works who've worked on this. Because I, I myself am not a big user of the trails, but I was blown away by this memo that you guys have accomplished so, so much. So I don't see it on a, as regular a basis as Councillor Lynch does, but it's very impressive to, to an, a non-trail user, too. So well worth it. So thank you. Excellent. Yes. Well, I would just echo what both Councillors Lynch and um, Swift Kayata said. Thank you very much. And fantastic. I, I would conclude by saying that uh, we all know what a great town Cape Elizabeth is. I know I travel a lot for business. When I come into Cape and I see that sign, Welcome to Cape Elizabeth, I just feel all the weight of my work off my shoulders and, and, and you just feel really great to be part of this town and very proud. And it's projects like this that just make it you know, all worthwhile. And uh, Maureen, thanks for your leadership. Conservation Commission, thank you for your leadership and your efforts, and for everybody who was involved in all of these projects. It's very impressive. Michael, do you have anything else? For you? No, ditto. <laughs> <laughs> thanks much. Okay, our next item is citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak to an item that is uh, not on our agenda this evening? Okay, we'll move on to item number 23-2007, the annual malt, Venice, and liquors permits and special amusement permit for the Inn by the Sea property. Do, does anyone want to make a motion? I would move approval of the um, um, liquor permit, um, special amusement permit for the Inn by the Sea. We have a second. second. Thank you. Any discussion? 
All in favor? Next is item number 24-2007, update on Hannaford Field Kids Turf Project. Do I hear, uh, Michael, would you like to speak to that? Yeah, just very briefly, uh, and there are representatives of the uh, Citizen Kids Turf Committee here as well, Graham Smith and Michael Ott, as well as uh, representatives of the school board, the, the chairman, uh, Kathy Ray, and Linka Winker, Linda Winker, who is the uh, chairman of the extracurricular something or other committee. The ones that looks at the committee that looks at things like this. Anyway, uh, the fundraising has really gone well. Uh, I think the, the council has the numbers in front of them. Every time you get a report, the numbers are a little bit better. It, it's it's at the process now. It's at the point now that the group would like to go forward and get the field started construction because they have they could get favorable pricing now that they can't get in the peak of the season. Uh, for that reason, I've drafted a lengthy uh, motion uh, for the town council to consider that lays out all the different understandings, and there's copies, I think, on the back table for the public as well, that lays out all the different understandings involving the project, when, when the different monies come to the town, uh, and the, all the other components of the project, and who's paying for them. And I would like to thank, uh, again, the, the Kids Turf Group, uh, and also the, uh, the school personnel uh, who have been working on this. Uh, it's taken a lot of cooperative effort. There's been a lot of questions. And there's still a few questions. There's going to be a few more questions. But, uh, you know, I think it's an opportune moment uh, to move forward with this and uh, would never be at this point without, you know, just like the trails in the past. This is a citizen-driven, citizen-volunteer effort that, uh, you know, has really made a difference. They, there's, even though the draft motion is a little out of date, they now have uh, well over half a million dollars in the bank, a little bit more than the motion says, and uh, they're ready to go. So I would encourage the council to move this forward. Okay. Do we have a motion? Marianne. Um, I would move it, but I also think we need to amend one word of the managers. Okay. Um, so um, I would move that um, we uh, approve it and um, subject to the managers memo that he's put together, but I would note on the seventh bullet, it says that the town manager will purchase the sweeper. And I think it probably oh, should I, read I, the town, <laughs> unless you're feeling particularly yeah. <laughs> generous, Michael. <laughs> you know, I, I, de I debated whether I'm the, per the, the charter says that I'm the purchasing agent. And I debated writing the purchasing agent. Everyone would have wondered who's the purchasing agent. I think it's understood that I, I'm doing that in my capacity as, as purchasing agent. I'm not planning to pay for it myself. I didn't think you were, but uh, yeah, I just think we should be. Okay, how about, how about the town manager will use municipal funds to purchase a sweeper and groomer? I think that would work. It's actually done, being done through public works, but the way the council gives orders, not to departments, your council gives direction it's a, to the manager. It's just the way formality works. I, I offer that as a friendly amendment just to make clear that it's coming from the municipal budget as opposed to the school budget or any other budget. So I offer that as a friendly amendment. Okay. Any discussion on the measure? Um, I have another friendly amendment of sorts that I'd like to make. Um, on, again, I, we have unnumbered bullets, but I'll call them bullets four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. In each of those, um, the bullet starts out saying it is understood by the town council. I'd like to propose that we take out, delete the phrase that says it is understood by the town council that. And the reason that I'm proposing that is I'd like the statement to be more mandatory as part of our order than simply this is what we understand. I think what we really mean by this is for our order to be a statement that is a mandatory statement rather than simply a statement of understanding as to those bullets. So for that reason, I propose that the bullets be modified by removing the understanding and saying, shall. For, do you, could I ask a question for clarification? So are you saying, for instance, in the fourth bullet, 
rather than it is understood by the town council that the scoreboard installation cost will be privately funded, it would just be reworded to say the scoreboard installation cost shall be privately funded. Exactly. Um, the next one would be revised to say approximately $9,000 in further engineering costs, including construction administration, shall be privately funded. Next one would be soccer goals and safety nets shall be funded, etc. cetera. Um, next the one. next one would say the town manager shall use municipal funds to purchase. The next one would say the town of Cape Elizabeth shall comply. Um, the next one would say the installation of the field shall necessitate. Um, and then the last one that I'm proposing changing would, saying, would say no funding is provided for an additional fence um, of approximately eight feet in height that may be advisable for security purposes. And, and we take out the next word that. So it says, and the superintendent of schools may include funding for such a fence in a future school budget. And the last two bullets that start out saying it is understood would remain as they're written. Those I'd like to thank the town manager for the effort to put together what is a very comprehensive proposed motion for us. And I think it's a great approach to this, so thank you. I would second those proposed, uh, that proposed friendly amendment. If I'm unclear where we are in the making amendments. No, I think, I think it, as long as it's accepted by Marion and yourself, I think we're okay. Well, I certainly accept them as friendly amendments. I had made the same changes in my doodling this morning, so. I'm just curious why you choose shall, not will. Is there a different implication or is it just um, protocol? It could be will. I think shall is just more clearly a mandatory mm -hmm. word. Um, but you're right, it certainly could remain as will. Is there any, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, are there any issues with that, Michael? None at all. Okay. Okay, if that's all the, uh, all the changes, all in favor? Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, we'll move on to item number 25-2007. Proposed acceptance of Blueberry Road, Fernwood Lane, and Red Oak Drive. Two open space parcels and drainage and pedestrian easements in the Blueberry Ridge subdivisions. Michael, would you like to speak to that? Uh, Mr. Chairman and colleagues on the town council, uh, I would like to disclose that the company that I own and operate uh, has enjoyed for some time, currently enjoys, and hopefully will continue to enjoy a uh, wonderful working relationship, uh, business relationship with the developer of Blueberry Ridge. Uh, my company has provided drywall and related materials for most, if not all, the homes in Blueberry Ridge. Um, there is no formal affiliation between our companies, but I am very sensitive to perceptions that my participation in this uh, item might bring. So I respectfully ask that the council consider uh, if abstention is in order for me. I, I do not think there is one in order. I don't think this has any any um, bearing on your financial well-being, whether you, you, know, you vote, you know, however you vote on this measure, that's my opinion. Any other comments from the councilors? Well, I, I think there is a concern, uh, a, perhaps a minor concern on both sides. Um, if people know that I have this relationship, it would be easy to uh, assume that a reason for a favorable vote would be connected to uh, my desire to maintain the business relationship. Conversely, if I were to vote in opposition, uh, I could reasonably expect to lose that building re uh, business uh, relationship. So are, so are you asking to be recused? I'm asking f for your determination on whether I should be recused. Would you like to be recused? Uh, That's what I'm asking. I'm a little uncomfortable. Okay. Marianne. I, I think given the close financial business relationship, this is an, a time when we should 
grant that. Um, yeah. I don't have I don't have an objection. I just I just know Jim, and I have no question about his integrity, and I know he did the right no, thing regardless of the outcome. But I, if you feel strongly, Jim, like that, I'm willing to support that. Uh, I'd be certainly more comfortable. All right. So why don't we go ahead and uh, so moved. Second. Second. All in favor of Jim's recusal for this matter. Okay. All opposed. I certainly enjoyed my time on the town council. <laughs> <laughs> I think you will. All right. Well, why don't we move forward? Is there a motion to support? Uh, or for, is there a motion regarding this item? Just there was a just to be clear. There was a draft motion uh, yes. that you have before you that I emailed earlier today. Uh, as in many of these, there's a few minor technical things, and I, I also emailed it to Mr. Fristacci so that he's aware of it. Uh, and basically, you're accepting it, and those other things need to be done by June uh, uh, June 1, 2007. And I need a written acknowledgement from him between now and then that says he's going to do it. Okay. Do we have a motion, David? Um, I move that the town council accept the roads, open space, drainage easements, and pedestrian easements as shown on the final plan of the Blueberry Ridge subdivision dated October 25, 2001, including Blueberry Road, Fernway Lane, and Red Oak Drive, with the acceptance conditioned upon the developer, Joseph Fristacci, agreeing in writing no later than February 1, 2007, that all items in the December 22, 2006 punch list will be fully completed no later than June 1, 2007, and receipt of a final acknowledgement no later than February 1, 2007. From Joseph Fristacci that items numbered 1 and 4 in said punch list will be completed prior to the issuance of occup occupancy permits for lots 12, 14, and 15. Do we have a second, Cynthia? Uh, oh, yes, I have a second and I have a question. All right. Um, I'm just curious, what are the, the items that are referred to as being on the punch list, just generally the nature of the item? Yeah, the, there was a list. Oh, was it uh, actually, it was emailed to you. There was a letter from the town engineer just dated December 22nd. And then we also got, received a letter, I think it was over the weekend, an email indicating you know, that there were a couple things that weren't done. Uh, it, it mainly involves some minor drainage things out near Mitchell Road that you just, you know, you can't do them this time of year. Uh, in most years, but the paving plants are closed anyway. Uh, and, you know, it's minor technical stuff, stuff like that. There's an issue. Uh, they have all the mylars now? They, they require that. What we gave them wasn't acceptable. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion on the item? It just if the, the effect of this is until I get the letters from Mr. Fustacci, we won't start plowing, we won't start, we won't record the deeds, and I trust that we'll get those things done by February 1. If he brings them in tomorrow, the acknowledgments, written acknowledgments, he will have met the, the commitment that's in this draft motion. Just, just one comment. Um, I, I do support accepting this, uh, the streets in this subdivision. Um, but I hope that our acceptance of this is not viewed by the um, city of South Portland as um, the, the last stroke before South Portland closes off uh, the street to access to the two Cape Elizabeth residents who live on um, is it Ed Edgewood. Edgewood. So um, I don't know how we communicate that to South Portland, but we've had a long cooperative relationship with South Portland in any number of areas and I would hope that um, they would not view this as they're being able to just close off that residence because it will make it um, harder for those two Cape residents who want to go to the cookie jar or to any number of stores in South Portland. Um, that's all I have to say. Mike, would you like to speak to that issue at all? Just we're working very cooperatively with officials in the city of South Portland. I've had a number of discussions with, with the city manager. I've also received emails from a number of residents, and I know that you know they're speaking to different elected officials there. Uh, we are looking at 
you know, signage. We're looking at a bump out so that uh, it really makes it clear that you can't go through. But, you know, but ultimately uh, it is up to the South Portland City Council, uh, their determination of what they do on, on South Portland roads. Okay, all in favor of this item? Yes, yes, we did. Cynthia seconded. seconded. Did. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All opposed? No. Very good. Why don't you come and join us? Tomorrow? Okay. Item number 26 2007 proposed amendment to Town Council rules relating to approval of meeting dates. Do I hear a motion? And. I would like to, well, if I could just introduce this briefly. I um, noted that when we were looking at the town council rules um, earlier in this council year, that because of the wording as the rules currently stand, that every time we changed, every, for every time we had proposed a change to the regular schedule of town council meetings, we would have to vote the, during the meeting before that to approve it. And I ask the manager if he would submit this change of the word the previous meeting to make it a previous meeting um, so that we could just vote on the whole annual schedule all at once. So I would make the motion to change uh, the uh, rule of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council that pertains to regular meetings as it is laid out in this memo of December 13, 2006. Do we have a second? Second. second. Jim? Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Now we'll move on to item number 27-2007, approval of proposed 2007 meeting dates. Do I have a motion? Ann. Um, I move we approve the proposed 2007 meeting dates for the town council as laid out in the agenda. Second. David. <clears throat> Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let's move on to item number 28-2007, report from appointments committee regarding vacancies on boards and commissions. And you'd like to introduce that? Yes. Um, the appointments committee has discussed, as you, as you recall, um, we had said at the previous meeting, the appointments committee had recommended a pretty extensive slate of candidates of uh, nominations for appointments to our various boards and commissions. We have two more slots that we would like to recommend at this time. The first is the appointment of Randy Clark to serve on the Conservation Commission for a term which will expire December 31st, 2008. That's to uh, fill an unexpired term. And then we also recommend Michael Valencourt to serve as the Fair Hearing Officer for a term to expire December 31st, 2009. Um, so I would move that we approve the recommendations of the Appointments Committee. And I have one other comment before someone hops in with a second. I just wanted to uh, also announce the Appointments Committee will be interviewing candidates on January 16th of this month. And uh, we have, we are hoping to fill two openings in the Arts Commission, one opening in the Personnel Appeals Board, and one opening in Thomas Memorial Library. Okay. We have a second on Ann's motion. Second the motion. Okay, Jim. Any discussion? All in favor? Thank you. Okay, now oh, I don't, it, yes. I'm sorry, and if I could just, I wanted to thank all the candidates who have applied so far and to encourage more people to keep applying. These boards and commissions are very important for the running of the town. They do substantive work on behalf of the, the town and the citizens, and I, I thank them for their contributions. I also wanted to thank Deborah Lane for her help to the Appointments Committee and the other members of the Appointments Committee, Mary Ann Lynch and David Backer. Thank, Thank you, Ann. Okay, we will move on to item number 29-2007, consideration of annual town council goals. 
Do we have a motion? Yeah. I would move that we approve the uh, list of town council goals as discussed in our workshop prior to this meeting and as presented in our in our packets. We have a second. Second. Sarah. Okay, any discussion on the goals? All in favor? Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to item number 30-2007, proposed adjustments in building permit fees. Yes, uh, I'm recommending that this proposal be referred to the Finance Committee. Currently, the building permit fee is $7, is $25 minimum for up to $1,000 value and $7 uh, per additional uh, $1,000 value. Beyond the $1,000, is a, if it's late, it's a double fee. What, what I'm proposing is that the building for, uh, permits be changed. The minimum would still be the same at $25. However, projects above $1,000 value, it would be 1% of the total estimated value of the building. Um, all of, it's also proposed that all of the, the revenues from the old fees remain in the general fund and the revenue from the addition, that, that extra, it's the equivalent of 0.03%, uh, or, or $3 per thousand, that that goes into a new fund to fund town center improvements. And you know there can be a lot of discussion on this and there's also a proposed bond in the comprehensive planning process, one of the major goals is to, to continue the implementation of the town master plan. The, the committee that Cynthia chairs uh, for road calming is also proposing a number of projects in the town center. We've had a couple of residential concerns in the town center about drainage uh, issues. Uh, plus, you know, we, we, we also continue to have uh, stormwater issues, uh, again, uh, th throughout the town center. So. This would be a mechanism to fund it all, to accomplish it, uh, as well as the traffic lights that are, that are proposed as well. Uh, ultimately, how this might evolve, I'm not sure, but I, I just wanted to put it on the table for discussion and hope that the council could discuss it uh, in its uh, finance committee capacity uh, at an early date. So, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Well, I would move that we refer this matter to the finance committee. Okay, and do we have a second? Second. Any discussion? David. I think this is a great idea. Um, I, thank you to our town manager again for proposing it. I think it's a, uh, a nice solution. I, I do think the numbers need to be changed slightly. I think our town manager recognizes I probably it. know the up to 2,500 value, that one. Yes. Yeah. It needs to be a minimum fee up to $2,500 in value is $25. Mm. And projects then above $2,500 is 1% of value. Yeah, the code enforcement officer pointed that out today. <laughs> I hadn't noticed it. <laughs> Otherwise, we'd have a project between $1,000 and $2,500 actually costing less than a $1,000 yeah, project. Th my sense was I responded to him, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. I am mean, wrong. But I hope the Finance Committee could look at this. And this is, there's lots of pieces to this and then would eventually draft up a number of motions based on ultimately what the Finance Committee comes up with. They would address it, that, David. Sarah? Does this leave open the possibility that the Finance Committee could <clears throat> debate this 1%? Could it be up more down? Or is, is this a proposal that this is just throwing it out there for yeah, we're a brainstorming just, it, session? Yeah, it's getting referred to the Finance okay. Committee at that point. It'll be discussed It'll be and further amended discussed. and changed and so on. They own it at that point. Yeah. Okay. Do whatever they want with it. Open up. Yeah. Would it make sense to, uh, the second bullet under the new proposal, would it make sense to change the last word to project rather than building? Uh, just for clarity's sake, 1% um, of the total estimated value of, of, of the project. Uh, in other words, if it if we're in addition, it's not on the whole building. It's oh, good point. Wouldn't that be all part of what we'll be? kind of discussing okay i think there are any number of ways that this could be mutated or changed mm -hmm. okay it's good good points though i mean to yeah. take notes but, 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 but i do want to be clear the, the we've always charged building permits based on the construction value and it doesn't include all of the site plan and some of those things so th th there is a difference okay mm -hmm. excellent Okay, so all in favor of referring this to the Finance Committee. Okay, 7 zero. Thank you. Now we'll move on to item number 31-2007.
proposed agreement with City of South Portland relating to public safety awareness point, excuse me, public safety answering point, PSAT. Do I hear a motion? Yeah, I, if, I, if I might, I, again, I'd like to thank the, ch the police and fire chiefs of both South Portland and Cape Elizabeth for their work on this. Uh, Jim Gailey, the assistant city manager of South Portland as well. Uh, Mike Hill, our works with Tom Lehigh, our town attorney, did send me an email, of, I think it was last night, uh, indicating that he still had a few concerns with the indemnity clause. I sent that to Jim Gailey in South Portland last night. He actually responded last night, uh, which kind of surprised me. Uh, but anyway, uh, so I'd, I'd like this. My recommendation was to, to approve this because it goes into effect June 30, but it's subject to the indemnity provisions being approved by the town attorney. Okay, do we have a motion? Cynthia. I would move that we accept or approve the agreement between the town of Cape Elizabeth and the city of South Portland, subject to the indemnity provisions being um, approved by the town attorney. Is there a second? Second. Okay, Sarah. Any discussion? Ann. Um, I realize that um, the public safety answering points, the, the number of them statewide, it's been mandated by the state that the number, the total number is to decrease. So I understand and accept that we have to be merging our PSAPs. However, I want to make sure that the um, public realizes, that we realize and the public realize, realize that there are costs involved with this that perhaps the, the overall idea is that statewide the cost will go down. That's the concept. I haven't seen numbers that will show how much they will go down, but that's the concept of regionalization. And I am of, in support of regionalization where it makes sense and when the costs go down and when um, services are enhanced. However, I want to make it clear that it's my understanding after asking the manager some questions this afternoon that in the first year, we're going to have $11,288 estimated an annual fee, annual fees, and then in startup costs of a little over $7,200. So the first year, this is going to cost a little over $18,000 that the town of Cape Elizabeth, which is the citizens of Cape Elizabeth, will have to pay for. Um, I think that we need to realize this is all extra cost for above and beyond what we do now to provide these same services. So whereas the state costs may be going down, the, the municipality's costs will be going up $18,000 and change because of this change. There, were no, there are no local savings coming from doing this because we're, everything else is staying the same. So far, we're keeping our own dispatch. Someday there may be consolidated dispatch and there may be more savings. But I just wanted to make that clear. I also asked the manager about service enhancements because those are important too. And he said there may be some service enhancements from this and I was glad to hear that. But I just wanted to make sure we're all aware that this will cost the town more. Nonetheless, I will be supporting the vote because I know it has to be done. It's, it's a mandate, but it is indeed an example of a higher level of government, the state, mandating something that they are not going to pay for, but that local citizens through property taxes and fees in Cape Elizabeth will be paying for. So just wanted to make sure that we were all very aware of that fact. I think that's very good input. Is there any projected savings over time or, or not at all? This is just an outlay of cost, and is it just a one year or each year do we pay that? It's it, according to the estimates provided, it's $18,558 first year cost. That's the startup costs plus the annual cost, and thereafter it's $11,288 per year more. Just for purposes of full disclosure, in addition to those costs, there's also another $1,450 cost because we, we are mailing to everyone in Cape Elizabeth a notice uh, 
indicating that all of the public safety, that our public safety answering point is now South Wall. Uh, it, it's really felt, we felt it was important that all the citizens truly be notified that their 911 calls are going to be answered at a different location. And I'm, I'm mentioning this only because a, I think it's important that we all understand it and that citizens understand it, but this is an example of the cost shifting, the tax shifting that goes on in government that when the state thinks it can save some money, I mean, and that's a noble endeavor to try to save money, they may well save some money, but basically at this point it's being offloaded, extra costs are being offloaded onto this individual municipality. Um, again, I will be supporting it because I understand legally that we have to do it, but, um, and, and I am in support of the, the overall goal of regionalization where it makes sense. This is a situation where I'm not sure it makes financial sense at this point in time. Hopefully we'll see something more positive in the future financially that will come out of it. Jim, uh, would it be possible to include the cost of the mailing, the citizens notification mailing with the tax mailing, tax bill mailing, the spring tax bill mailing? It, we, we want to send the notice right now okay. that, that E911 is effective June 30, uh, January 30. This has to happen this year. This is not something we can delay and postpone. No, it's a. No. It's, it's, we have to do. It's not option. Main Public Utilities Commission mandate. It, it, I might add to uh, Jim that the mailing list that we're using for this is not the tax bill mailing list because we want to be sure that it, it goes to the address of the person who's actually living in Cape Elizabeth and to all the renters, uh, as opposed to a lot of the tax bills are, are mailed out, uh, you know, out of state and other places, and tenants don't get them. And it's a, it's not a good mailing list when you really want to be sure that residents receive something. David, I have a question about the uh, terms of paragraph three of the agreement that requires that Cape Elizabeth be responsible for her call technical support for the general and emergency maintenance of the dispatch computer hardware and software platforms. And I wonder if the town manager has any insight into what that is referring to. Yeah. It, it, Part of, there may be some maintenance calls in Cape Elizabeth as well as in South Portland and we would be responsible for the maintenance calls uh, as it relates to the system to support our connections in our system. It's not anticipated that it's a, it's a significant expense. So we're not being asked to pay for maintaining South Portland's separate software or hardware? No. Okay, all in favor of uh, the motion. <laughs> very good. I, I again do want to thank South Bolton. They've been very helpful and cooperative on this. So thank you. And, and I, want to, I, I want my comments to be sure that I uh, reflect that I thank the manager for his hard work on this. This is a very difficult issue, and he's handled it with skill and great good humor including answering all my questions this afternoon. So I appreciate his efforts on this. We will move on to item number 32-2007, proposed extension of two Edward Jones lease of space at Community Center Office Building. Do I hear a motion? Is that on mine? This was a mailing we sent out this weekend, U.S. mail. David. Get a mailing. Um, I, I'd like to propose that since we're going into executive session anyway, that this item, I think it's something properly discussed in executive session. I can't cite to the specific section or subsection that's appropriate um, for real estate matters. There is one. Um, I know there is one, I just can't cite to it, and I know we're supposed to when we... One MSRA 405, it's one of the paragraphs under that, so... That just that alone works fine. So you want to make a motion well, to that effect? Well, then, then I'd like to move that item number 32-2007, um, the proposed extension of the Edward Jones, uh, the lease of the Edward Jones space at the Community Center Office Building, uh, 
um, be uh, considered in executive session under one Maine Revised Statutes Annotated Section 405 as um, a matter concerning the, the lease of town property. Okay. Do we have a second on the motion? Second. Okay. Any further discussion at this point? All in favor? Okay. Thanks. Okay. Now we are at the point of citizens' discussion of items not on the agenda. Are there any citizens that would like to come up and speak to us? Please. Just please state your name, your address, and come to the podium. Yes, ma'am. Good evening, everyone. My name is Deborah Sampson. I reside at 59 Edgewood Road in Cape Elizabeth. And first of all, I want to thank Mr. McGovern and all the members of the council who have been working with South Portland to try to keep our road open. Um, after your decision tonight to accept all the roads in Blueberry Ridge, I have a couple of questions for you. Um, number one, will my residence remain as Edgewood Road, or will I now be part of Red Oak Drive? Since there are only two residents on Edgewood, would you continue to just keep that section as Edgewood, or would it continue and be Red Oak Drive? So that's one of my concerns. I'm also pleased to hear that there will be measures to deter the cut through traffic, for as you know, South Portland is still um, working on deciding whether they want to close off the road. So. Um, if there is continued cut through traffic, which they consider to be illegal, other than for myself and my neighbors at 60 Edgewood, then they certainly will um, be more inclined to decide to close the road. I do have um, some other concerns about the closure, and they are mostly safety reasons. I'm concerned about um, fire and police being able to access my home quickly and efficiently, um, at a past South Portland Council meeting, Chief McGoldrick got up and spoke about how essential it was when Blueberry Ridge was under construction and there was an accident on site, how essential it was that they were able to come right down Edgewood and um, help that person who was injured. He said, in cases like that, a minute can make all the difference in the world. So after hearing that, I... Um, had my fears a little bit more elevated in terms of closing that road. So I really do hope that um, you can work together with South Portland to keep our road open. My home was built there in 1969, and although I've owned it for only four years, they have always um, been able to access Edgewood Road um, since 1969. There's always been a working relationship with South Portland, so I'd like to see that continue. Um, if the road is closed, um, I would very much appreciate being um, able to air my concerns about how I would like that handled. If South Portland does close it, what will we do on, this, on the Cape Elizabeth side to make that as attractive and um, beneficial for, for the Cape Elizabeth side of that road? So that was really all that I wanted to say for the record this evening. So I appreciate your continued work with South Portland, and I hope that um, in the end we can have it remain the way it is. Thank, Thank you. you very much for your comments. Thank you. Michael, do you want to speak to that issue? Uh, I'll speak to the, the first part of it. Uh, Neil Williams, in his capacity as the chief of police, is the addressing officer of Cape Elizabeth in accordance with the addressing, or the addressing ordinance, which, it, which was actually adopted by the town council at some point. He's aware of the issue, and I've asked him to work with, uh, with, with Deborah Sampson and the, and the Bolases, the other family there, to, find, to ascertain their desires and to, to work something out. Beyond that, as, as uh, Ms. Sampson indicated, we are working closely with South Portland. I've had probably nine or ten conversations uh, with this new, relatively new city manager. And, you know, and, and I've had discussions as well with a couple of council members and some others. And uh, it, uh, you know, I, I ultimately don't know. It's, it's a decision of the South Portland City Council. And, uh, you know, we're, we're working at providing, on, with they, with, to put this in perspective, the Sampsons and the, uh, Ms. Sampson and uh, the Bolases, uh, live on a section of Cape Elizabeth that was only accessed from Edgewood Road in Cape Elizabeth uh, for in South Portland. Uh, the city of South Portland at the time the Blueberry Ridge uh, was being developed 
uh, decided to abandon, uh, to discontinue the end of those streets. It, in, at the same time they did that by council order, they gave an easement uh, to, to Ms. Sampson and to the Bolas properties. Uh, the action that came before the South Fulton City Council at the beginning of December, I think originally, uh, was to, now that they have access from Blueberry Ridge, uh, it's to discontinue that easement that they granted to them at the time that it was discontinued. So Portland, after they did that, discovered that we hadn't accepted the road yet, and uh, it would not have been a good thing for them to do, uh, because they would have clearly been taking away a property right, and they'd had some appraisals done, I think, based on the fact that uh, there, there, there would be other way in. Uh, you know, th that said, you know, our goal is exactly, you know, in the discussions, uh, the, the chiefs and myself, and Bob Malley as well is exactly the goal that, that Deborah Sampson has, uh, that she's indicated. It's to allow access through there, but to strongly discourage people who don't have the legal right to go through there. The only ones that have the legal right to go both ways would be the owners of the two properties at 58 and 59, or whatever the number is, uh, 5960, uh, Edgewood slash whatever the name of the new road is. Uh, they're the only ones that have the, the legal right. And what we're, we're looking at is, at South Portland's expense is uh, sort of a bump out to narrow it up just wide enough for a fire truck for a plow uh, and some signage that indicates that, that it is private because it was discontinued by the city uh, that they've compensated uh, everyone for that discontinuation that, that they were required to at that point and uh, you know we'll see what happens but we, it's been a very cooperative relationships with the staffs and the counselors, uh, you know, in South Portland as well. There's, there's a lot of folks in Edgewood who are concerned about potential cut through traffic. And uh, we're trying to work it through to make sure that it's, it's safe for everyone and convenient for the, the residents who now have the legal right uh, to go either way. Thank you, Michael. Okay. <clears throat> are there any other citizens that want to discuss anything, any other items that are not on the agenda? Okay. We will move on to item number 33-2007. And whoever makes this motion, I'd like you to add to it the um, consideration that Councilor Backer brought up regarding the real estate issue. We already moved on that. I think it's already voted. It's just we just delayed okay, so going into executive go. session. All right. Thank you. All right. Item number 33-2007. Request to enter executive session under 1 MRSA 405, begin the annual evaluation of the town manager. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Okay. Just one thing. The agenda says there may be a workshop after the executive session. Yeah. There won't be because that was all covered. The, yeah, the, the wor workshop's done, and we will not be returning to this. Uh, room for the adjournment. We will simply uh, stay in the Jordan Conference room and open the door. But is it anticipated that we will be taking, we might take a public vote on item number? Uh, it is. Yes. Whatever, the Edward Jones one. The 32, item number 32. Oh, yes. They yeah. may do it in there, but we'll, if you're, we, we'll check to see if there's anyone out here and invite them before there's a vote. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Adjourn to the uh, Jordan Conference room, please.